Would you please join me in our call to worship this morning, reading responsively Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Now that we have been called to worship, it is appropriate that we begin that worship by confessing our sins. Please join with me in the unison prayer of confession as it's found in your bulletin. O Holy One, we call to you and name you as eternal, ever present and boundless in love. Yet there are times, O God, when we fail to recognize you in the dailiness of our lives. Sometimes shame clenches tightly around our hearts and we hide our true feelings. Sometimes fear makes us small 
and we miss the chance to speak from your strength. Sometimes doubt invades our hopefulness and we degrade our own wisdom. Holy God, in the daily round from sunrise to sunset, remind us again of your holy presence hovering near us and in us. Free us from shame and self-doubt. Help us to see you in the moment-by-moment possibilities to live honestly, to act courageously, and to speak from our wisdom. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In Jesus Christ, we are a new creation. Good morning, friends. You may be seated. Friends, you are welcome in this place in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we shall rejoice, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We are thankful that you are here with us celebrating on this communion Sunday and also a Sunday when we give thanks to our veterans. I hope you saw the flags arranged outside. I hope you've seen in the bulletin insert the names listed of Kirk members who have served in the armed forces. If for whatever reason your name is not listed here, please let our office know so we can make sure to include you for our future publications. But at this time, I invite our veterans to stand on this day. Would you stand if you served our country? And please, let's give them a round of applause. We are thankful for your service. Friends, we also would like to welcome those joining us via live stream on our Facebook page, our website, and at our Kirk West campus. In fact, I have some really good news to share. Presbyterians Today, a national Presbyterian magazine, published an article on our very own Kirk West ministry. And it highlighted Joan Hanpeter, of course, uh, who is just such a fierce, fierce person. I always tell people if she had lived in the 1600s, women would have had the right to vote right there, right at the beginning, very, very early on. She has really sacrificed on this day of theme, uh, this theme of sacrifice for today. She is someone who has sacrificed for that campus ministry, and we're so thankful for her ministry in our midst. So I hope you'll send her and that Kirk West community uh, some encouragement. Maybe you'll even stop by sometime. And our interim senior pastor, Dr. McDonald, is actually at the Kirk West campus, so we're going to wave to him. Hi, Dr. McDonald. Uh, 
Uh, and of course, hi, Joan Han Peter, and hi, Kirk West. All right, I think we did a pretty good job. So friends, a couple of announcements for us today. Of course, following our service, uh, we will have a special luncheon and program designed for veterans and their families. Lunch is complimentary. Uh, if you haven't registered for that, uh, please just check in with us before heading down there. There are some limitations in terms of seating, uh, but we'd love to find a way to accommodate you just in case. And of course, uh, our guest preacher today, Reverend Dr. Chase Ryan Wilhelm, who is a combat veteran himself and currently a chaplain for the armed forces as well as the uh, state uh, prison system in the state of Illinois uh, is preaching today and will be speaking at that luncheon. So we're so thankful to have you back here at the Kirk. Our new uh, member class begins today. Uh, you'll, you can join us following the 11 o'clock. And of course, that class continues on November 13th and admission is December 4th during the 11 a.m. service. Be a part of adorning the Kirk this Christmas season by donating a poinsettia for $25 each. Donate online or mail your check to the Kirk with attention to Marsha Rogers by Tuesday, November 29th. That's the date you wanna make sure you save. We are looking for volunteers to help with the Westminster Thanksgiving meal prep and delivery. Go to the Kirk website, type Thanksgiving in the search bar to find the shifts available the whole week of Thanksgiving. It's a great way to get your family involved, your kids, friends, neighbors, that we can serve those, especially in a time where we want to give thanks by serving and through our sacrifice. Friends, uh, also a note of welcome, Sarah Cameron, who is an elder uh, uh, here at the Kirk and is a part of our adult formation uh, committee, has welcomed a grandchild in her life. Uh, so I hope you'll send her a note of congratulations uh, to celebrate, and that's uh, why she is unable to join us today, but we totally understand why, so we're thankful for her. And friends, I now invite you uh, to give one another a, a warm greeting from across the aisle. You can give the peace sign the fist bump, uh, you know, whatever you'd like uh, to welcome one another uh, into this space, friends. We give thanks. Friends, it is great to see the joy in this room and let us prepare our hearts for the reading of Scripture. The first lesson is found in the book of Job, chapter 19, verses 23 through 27. It can be found in the Old Testament section, page 468 of your pew Bible. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth, and after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here with me this morning, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 20, verse 27 through 38. Some Sadducees, those who say there is no resurrection, came to him and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, Leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married and died childless. Then the second, then the third married her, and in so the same way all seven died childless. And finally, the woman died also. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? 
for the seven had all married her. Jesus said to them, Those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in that resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die anymore because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story about the bush, where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Now, he is God not of the dead, but of the living. For to him, all of them are alive in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please let us bow our heads and join our hearts for a moment of prayer or reflection. O God of all of our efforts, look especially upon the efforts we beseech thee of those who have fallen in the service of their nation. Reminded always of your call that there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for another. We now pause in silent memorial for all those, and especially those from this congregation, who have been lost to the throes of mortal decisions in the service of their state and home. May the silence of this hall echo with the knowledge that all those who have stood valiantly in the service of their home stand in the space of that silence. All those who have paid the ultimate price, all those who may never be forgotten remain in this silence. May their memory be a blessing, and may we together say, Amen. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Well, good morning. Good morning. It is great to be back in this space with you. I have had the humble privilege of being here a few times before as an army chaplain. It is beautiful to just be inside a building instead of in a field uh, doing a service on the hood of a Humvee with four guys who really don't want to be there that are just getting out of latrine duty. So I hope that's not what you're trying to do this morning. But. I thank you for this opportunity to be here. I, I thank you for this chance to share in your pulpit. And I would ask this morning if you would be so willing to join me and, and listen to a story, if you will. Just sit back and relax and listen. There was a man once sitting on the side of a mountain that really has no name, or if it does, it's changed more times that can be remembered, in some far-off land that's been riddled by pain and fear laid upon it from people not born from its own dirt. And that man was one of those foreigners, one of those in the long line of many who had trod perhaps not that exact same location, but the valley and the same ridge line time and time again before him. In truth, he was but one of many who had known the feel of that valley's wind, the smell of its dirt, the contour of its lines. Where he sat that chilly morning, there could have been 
A thousand sat in the exact same space before him, or, or there could have been none. It was all the same. For there on the side of that mountain, off in the distance, arose a ramshackle clay and stone tower. Said by locals, tales passed down for thousands of years to have been built by Alexander the Great. That tower which broke the stretching pinks and yellows of a morning sun, it was said to be one of the furthest points of Alexander's efforts in that area. The tower rose from the earthen colors below it as the sun rose with it. Our eyes were affixed on that tower throughout the entire conversation. The man chuckled at the irony of watching the sun rise on what was supposedly one of Alexander's last efforts. Sitting there on a pile of slag rock and granite that morning, just a month before he was to return home, short time in it, he had, he had 26 days and a wake-up left, if I recall, and then he would be home. There waiting for him would be a wife, a wife he'd been married to for four years, but only lived with for about two. Back home waiting for him would be four children and two other wives from previous marriages that had been ground up, that had been crushed under the weight of constant deployments, reoccurring training, nights spent away, nights spent somewhere else, even when he was in his own bed. Nights spent away, even when he was at his own dinner table. There on the side of that mountain, in full view of the irony and the satire of the futile efforts of not just Alexander, but perhaps all who had tried what we were doing before us, the man spoke of fear, but only lightly. Fear of another failed marriage. Fear of not knowing his children. Fear of, of realizing that he would never really be able to leave that mountain. Not fear of the, the physical rigors or conditions or the dangers or the circumstances of that day. Those were the least of his fears. And in fact, the conditions, the dangers, the opportunities were with some level of shame, he mumbled. Those were his real loves. Not that he didn't love his family or any of his past wives. Certainly not that he didn't love his kids, for he did, with the fullness of how he knew how to love them. But it was that hill, it was that mountain, that view, that irony, that satire, that danger. It was that morning that he loved in a way that he knew no one else could really understand. No one else save for those few brothers and sisters baptized by fire who know a land they've long left, who can still smell it, who close their eyes and see the horizons where they spent perhaps the best days of their youth. Brothers and sisters who perhaps fall asleep safe at home at the end of a cul-de-sac but fall asleep still counting tracer rounds, slipping out over a field like neon ribbons cutting through the night. Those of us who know the heat and the force of a rotary wing bird dropping us off or the excitement when it picks us up or what it looks like when it takes your friend away forever. Those were the things he knew how to love. Those were the things that loved him back. 
Those were the things he was good at, had no question about. He knew his rank and his place and his privilege and his job. Those were the things that he drunk up like a dehydrated wanderer at the well of an oasis that we both knew was just a mirage. There on the side of that mountain, speaking about hopes and dreams and fears and realities, we... No, sorry, sorry, wait. Maybe it wasn't on the side of a mountain. Maybe it was along a rice paddy in a sweltering jungle night with the sounds of a bleeding water buffalo bouncing off the dike behind you. No, no, maybe, maybe it wasn't there. Maybe it was on a frozen dirt road in a village somewhere on a peninsula with the shadows of children picking up kernels of rice. No, no, maybe it wasn't there. Maybe, maybe it was in a hedgerow in a region now that is more well-known for its bubbly drinks than its once-saturated fields. Or maybe it was that one night that comes around every year where you tell the wife and kids to go see a movie without you and you lock yourself in your basement. Or maybe it was last Tuesday. Just picked up the kids. We were taking them to practice. You're supposed to grab some groceries and then meet the wife back at the practice field. And there you sat. Bolted back to reality at the corner of Forgettable Lane and every name street. There you sat with horns blaring behind you as the lights turned from red to green to yellow to red again. And you realized for just a moment that you weren't back on the side of that mountain. You were never going to be back on the side of that mountain. And no one would know the end of that conversation you had. No one would know the fears you shared, the dreams you exposed, the lies you had to make true or the brothers and foes alike that you watch fall to eternal rest. I know that chilly morning on the side of a mountain, I listened to a man speaking a truth spoken a thousand times before him. The truth of a a home he loves so much yet feels like a stranger when he gets back to. The truth of a, a people who sent him away to a place they didn't know where they were sending him. The truth of a thousand nights lost. A thousand nights lost already, and they've they've even yet to come. The truth of sitting there, watching the sunrise, having a conversation, wondering whether or not God is a God of the living or the dead, and then spitting in the dirt and realizing it didn't matter. It's all the same. Friends, we hear this morning of a challenge, one like many time and time before, laid before Christ. A challenge meant to try to twist him and lure him into skipping a beat or contradicting himself. A challenge meant to conform God's love to the ideas and conscripts of of man, not divine. We hear this morning of a reply to that challenge, a reply like many times before that we've heard. We we see Christ meeting the challenge, dismantling the simple and oppressive, the dogmatic and exclusive boundaries created by institutions and men who think they know what love means. We hear this morning of a reply from our God who defies the notions of what it means to be loved. stands up to the the idea that a woman's body can be owned and passed, that there's rank in love. 
We hear of a Christ who destroys the concept of death, who speaks to the power of love which surpasses even the grave, surpasses even the fears that were left on the side of the mountain, the ones that some of us have to relive time and time again when we wake up in a cold sweat. This morning, we gather to memorialize, remember, and honor all those, and specifically those from this congregation and community that have earned the title that the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, we are a little early today. But this is the undergirding of our time together in worship. This is part and parcel why I'm even here in your pulpit. This notion of remembering, this notion of honoring, this notion of loving, this notion that all are alive in Christ. This is the meditation of the morning. This is the reflection. Even if we spend but one hour together today, this is what we're doing holding the rigors of trauma and evil and pains of war and combat in one hand, and then hearing about the love, the memory of grandfathers, the the memory of lost sons and daughters that are still alive in God in the other. And I ask us, as our Sadducees in our text this morning asks us and asks Christ, which of these two while held in tension, while equally understood and equally examined, while known and felt, which of these two shall the pain of loss, the specter of memory, the facade of flags in a front yard, the shadow of flag-draped coffin, shall that win the day? Or shall, as a man on the side of a mountain once begged, as all those who we have lost, I would be so bold to say, also beg. And as Christ commands, rather shall the power of love, of all things, even the terror, be allowed to rise. So, while we honor all those who have known the ultimate cost, and we worship our God and serve our community, I must ask us, Shall we let the echoing silence grip us to a dark night of pain? Or as the sun was rising across that valley that morning, as the sun and the love of God breaks through these stained and storied glass windows and bounces upon our hearts, shall we take the time to listen to listen before it's too late. Listen to God. Listen to the stories of of those old men and women who shake your hand and tell you the same story they've told you three times before. Simple question. How you live it out is much, much more complicated, my friends. For if we take seriously our gospel narrative this morning, then I believe the opportunity to live out listening is endless. And specifically on this day and in this season, as we are called to honor and recognize those who have served our nation, I ask, listen to those stories. Listen to what's being said between the lines. Take the hand of that veteran. He's got coffee on his breath. Feel his flesh. Feel the handshake from that woman who was served. Flesh that was willing to be cut for your safety. Listen, for just as the morning sun rose that morning on the side of a mountain, Stillness of dawn is often cut short. And so too shall the stories and the opportunities to listen to these brave men and women will someday be but memories echoing out to you from a hill that has no name. 
if you've not figured it out, that mountain was mine. I was on that hill. The man I was speaking with that morning, I, I, I truly, I can't remember his name. He left. He went home. I stayed. My time wasn't up. And yet another man told me another story on another mountain. Fears were exposed, hopes were dreamed, camaraderie was shared, love was offered to both the living and the dead. So please, I beg of you, listen. For in the end, some of us can no longer be listened to. And yet they are alive and loved by God. That, my friends, was the point of the story all along. Let us together say amen. As we prepare our hearts and minds to give of our treasure to the Lord, let us pray. God of peace and God of grace, we are so thankful for today, for the many gifts you've blessed us with and the gift we have to bless your church, to bless the world, and to herald your kingdom through our offering. We pray that you would use these treasures to bring about peace on earth. That in so doing, we might honor that ultimate sacrifice in Christ Jesus, who gave it all for us so that we may give it all for others to the building up of your church, the healing of your world, and to the glory of your name, in whose name we pray, amen.
Friends, people of God, this is the joyful feast for all of us. People will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites all those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. When our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them, and their eyes were opened and they recognized him. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Everlasting God, we thank you for commanding the light out of darkness, for creating the whole world and calling it good. We thank you for making us in your image to live with each other in love for the breath of life, for the gift of speech, and the freedom to choose your way. Your ways are filled with justice and truth, with people of faith from all times and places. We lift our hearts in joyful praise, for you alone are holy. Holy God, we thank you for your Son, Jesus, who lived with us, sharing joy and sorrow. He told your story, healed the sick, and was a friend of sinners. Obeying you, he took up his cross and was crucified by people he loved. We praise you that he is not dead, but is risen to rule the world, and that he is still the friend of sinners. We trust him to overcome every power to hurt or divide so that when you bring in your promised kingdom, we will celebrate victory with him. Remembering the Lord Jesus, we break bread and share one cup, announcing his death for the sins of the world and telling his resurrection to all people and nations. We pray as he continues to teach us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, on the night that our Lord, Savior, brother, and friend Jesus was to be arrested, he sat at table with his disciples, breaking bread with them. He said, this is my body given for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. And so friends, each time that we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior until he comes again in glory and we feast together in that heavenly banquet. Friends, this is the Lord's table and it is the Lord who invites us. So come those of you who have tried to follow Jesus and those of you who have failed. Come those who love God a little and those who want to learn to love God a little more. Come, all is ready. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. 
you please join me in the prayer after communion? In your body broken and in your blood shed for all of us, Lord, we have tasted and seen that you are good. In this meal, we have experienced again your deep love of your world. May the sweet taste of this meal strengthen us for living for you and remind us that we are called to live according to your will and to love as you love. Help us to yearn for your coming again. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, once again, my sincere and humble thanks for the opportunity to worship with you on this morning and to remember and to honor all those who have come before us. Therefore, I end where I began my charge to you on this day is that as you love, so too may you listen. Therefore, go forward into this week and every week with the will of Christ upon your heart and the work of God upon your hands. Go forward into this community on this day and forevermore to love and to serve. And together we say amen.